until recently, uh, the people thought that being bilingual was an odd situation, that it created complexity for young babies uh, introduced to two languages from birth, uh, that they might be confused, that they might suffer interference from the two languages, that it might harm them in, in their later development. And what we, now know, what we now know in 2015 is that is simply not true. So what we see is that uh, infants in the first year of life exposed to two languages, a situation that has been fraught with uh, debate about whether babies are going to be really confused by having two languages are advantage, that they, they uh, not only develop the ability to use both languages, but they uh, develop a set of abilities that enable them to keep straight who's speaking which language. They, there's a recent study that showed, for example, just to illustrate, that um, young babies under a year are more likely to look at adults' mouths rather than their eyes when adults are speaking. And the suggestion is that even these infants who are not bilingual, I mean, they're in a, in a, a bilingual environment, are learning something very, very important about learning. They're, they're really learning to learn, even at this very early stage. They're learning to, to direct their attention to exactly the place where language emerges, namely from people's mouths, from speech. Um, and we see these kinds of benefits really throughout. In young adulthood, especially for individuals who've not been exposed to two languages from early childhood, in, in this country, we, we often consider it very difficult to acquire a second language. So uh, college students, for example, are very often complain that being required to study a second language is, is really a very, very difficult task uh, that goes against the grain of normal learning. Uh, and uh, what, we, what we know is that being confronted with a second language when you have a very skilled native language is something that may require a set of very, very special learning circumstances to achieve success. Uh, so one of the hypotheses we have, one of the, the ideas we have about how this might work, is that we think that there may be some cost associated with initial exposure to a second language, and that cost may particularly affect individual learners' ability to use their native language, which is a really scary thought. If you're a monolingual speaker and your first language, your native language, is uh, disrupted, um, well, you don't have another, another option. And what we see is that native speakers who are able to allow that kind of disruption to occur, and we don't necessarily think that occurs consciously, but we think it may occur by virtue of the nature of the learning environment and by the nature of their previous uh, learning experience, we think may become better second language learners, may in fact be able to acquire a second language uh, as an adult. And looking at, at children who are in a situation where, uh, so not babies, but, but school-aged children, especially those who've come from homes where English is not the language spoken, and they're confronted with having to learn English in school, and without that skill are going to be at very high risk of academic failure. What we see is that having maintenance of that home language, keeping the home language alive, is going to uh, create a desirable difficulty. It's going to impose a demand to have both languages present. And what it's going to do is it's going to improve their ability to learn to read uh, and improve their performance in school. Mm -hmm.